So I have two friends with me, two very good friends. They have been at each other's throats on whether the manager of Manchester United deserves to be in the position or not. Trust me, they are two very good friends. It's been more than a year now that they've been at each other's throats. Should Ten Hag leave Manchester United or should Ten Hag stay at Manchester United? This is the showdown here on United and Everything Football. We are going for a quick break. When I come back, I will introduce these two very good friends of mine on this show. And then we will set the ball rolling on Ten Hag in or Ten Hag out. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the showdown here on United and Everything Football. Yeah. Is a new program, the showdown, purposely for debates here on this channel. And on the maiden edition, I have two of my very good friends, my very, very, very good friends here. They are two good friends as well. But when it comes to the subject of Eric Ten Hag of Man United, they are at each other's throats. Now, one man called the Man Situ is of the view that. Ten Hag has not added anything to this United. He feels that Ten Hag should leave. And that he has not improved any player at Man United since he took charge. Now, there is another man on the other hand who feels that, well, Ten Hag has come improved players and that he deserves the chance to continue as coach of Man United. And United will have to do a lot to protect him for him to remain at his job. My brothers are here, Michael Akomia, the Messiah, and <laughs> the man Situ. Let, let, me, let me start with Michael. Michael, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Great it's to have you here. Day. We are bringing the Definitely. banter and the fight on Twitter here on United <laughs> and Everything Football. The man Situ, how are you doing, bro? Charlie, you, were, you, were, you were great, you were okay. great on the All-African Games. Your commentary or everything, Charlie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just like I hope you are doing very well. Thank you very much. I'm well, I'm well, and uh, good to see Akumiya, my man. What's up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let let let, let me start with Sichu. Sichu, let me start with you. You believe Eric Ten Hag has not added anything to the Man United team yet. Or you, you, let me let me put it this way: You think he has not improved the team? He has not improved players. Why do you think so? And why have you always always been on the neck of Eric Ten Hag at Man United? Well, yeah. To be fair, my issue with Ten Hag has been have been on on um, purely on the job that he's done. It, it's nothing personal. I just look at the the facts, the storylines, the numbers, and and the competition as a whole. And if you remember through the whole of last season, I kept saying that my United were achieving what they should have really had. And I kept saying every time I was achieving because it was his first season. They didn't really get in the place. I mean, he, he might have wanted to. It would take some time for him to get his philosophy and his ideas through to the players that were available at the club. And the players that needed recoaching, it was going to take some time for him to recoach them. Then the very reason why I thought he had overachieved with the squad again was that he was playing nothing like the Eric and Hank ball that we perceived was going to bring to my United, perhaps. And in the end, it's proved that there was nothing like Ten Hag ball. He basically maybe doesn't even have it anyway. And it was just all talk. But the, the, because the simple thing is, when he came to the first two games where he lost miserably, he tried to play a brand of football that the group of players he had were never able to, were, were never going to get it going. So David Diaz was struggle, Harry Maguire was struggle, other players were just not fitting into that style. Quickly, he switched from that to be more pragmatic and play a way that would accommodate the team and the squad of players that he had. And for a manager to change his principles and his style, to play in the way United were playing last season, and get the results they were getting and finishing in top four, winning the cup, playing the FA Cup final, I thought that was the manager who, in my opinion, had overachieved because his real principles had not been drilled and coached into the team or into the players. Then, fast forward into this season, I mean, many things happened last season, but I'm sure that is all gone now. If I mention the people, we we'll forget it. So let's fast forward to this season. When a manager had a great period of his first season, he started a preseason in the first season, 
It's not a full season to coach the team. He has a full preseason, the second season. You are expecting that the manager is able to, by that time, get the team to play in a way that is perceived to have been his way. More control, more ability in, in, in linking up from defense to midfield to attack. And, and, and if like an identity for the team. And we are in the manager's second season at a club like Manchester United, having brought through players that he himself wanted at the club. And we still don't have an identity for the club. That for me is a problem. The manager has at least worked with some players at the club for a season and a half. And these players haven't been able to be recoached to play the way the manager wants to play. Some players are not coachable, I agree. But others, need, we need to see a significant shift of ideas and mentalities from others. And now let me narrow it down to clear examples. A player like Marcus Rashford for an attacker who can only run with the ball. There's no player in the world who can stop the ball and pass. There's no player in the world who can't, who, who can't you know, be able to calm his nerves and pass. The only player in the world that we've seen that can't do that is Marcus Rashford. Now, remember that when we, we, we saw Jack Grealish at Aston Villa, Grealish was a player who carried the ball from his half into the opponent's half and create chances. When he got into Man City, he was recoached to stop doing these things. And that was coaching. Now I'm saying that when you've got a player like Rashford, you can recoach him to add anything to his game to shift to the next level. That is a problem. When you've got a player like um, Anthony, who struggled in his first season, and to be fair, of the fact is he's become worse in his second season. That is a problem. Because that is a player that the manager knew from Ajax. That is a player that you've got him into the club in his first full season. Played him through bad patches, played him through bad spells, and it become worse in the second season, right? Now, when you look at a player like Scott McTominay, he's good enough to be a squad player, but he still can't pass. He still doesn't understand spacing. He still doesn't know how to defend. All he does is to run and get into the zone, and when the ball comes to him, he can score. But his general understanding of midfield role hasn't improved, and that for me is not coaching, right? And when you look at the general decision making of the club or of players in the team, it cuts across. It doesn't matter if it is Onana, it is Bruno, it is Casimiro, it is McTominay, it is uh, uh, Martinez, Luke Shaw, Dalo. The general decision making in the team, on and off the ball, has been off. And we're talking about elite pros who, when they play for their countries, behave in a different way. But when the way they are, the, the, the shadow of my United behave in a disastrous way. Then the point again is, when you're a coach and in your second season at a club, I know the, all the injury things, but I'm going to say something about that as well. When you're coaching the second season of the club, the very thing that causes defeat in almost every single game is the fact that your midfield is so wide open that everybody can walk through and straight away get to face your goalkeeper. But there hasn't been any single remedy to stop that from happening. Then that for me is coaching rather than anything else. I know the excuse that Akuna is going to give. Okay. It's Glazers. It's blah, blah. It's blah, blah. <laughs> but yeah, for me, <laughs> that we need to see, we, we need to see the manager trying to put something on the pitch yeah. for us to admit that his style mm -hmm. is workable. Mm -hmm. But maybe at the top, they need to fix A, B, C, D. At the moment, if I ask Akumia, which player improves Eric Ten Hag's style of my United, I guarantee you have no answer why Eric Ten Hag doesn't have a style at my United now. There's no identity with him at my United now. And that for me at the Man United level. Okay. It's inexcusable, it's not good enough. All right. Akumia, let me let me get to you. Um you've 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 had a strong you have you've had strong views about Eric Ten Hag and reasons why you feel he should he should he should be given more opportunities at the club. Now, this is what Sicho is saying. No clear identity after a season. Um, with the club, at least we should be getting to see in it some some sort of some semblance of uh, of an identity, but we are not seeing any. Um, no, no, not many of the players have improved under him. What, what, what do you think? Or what's your opinion on this? Um, thank you very much, Kwame. Um, first of all, I would love to say that um, Citrus will explain to us Eric Ten Hag style if he doesn't have a style. So what, how, do, how do Manchester United play? They just kick the ball around, play it anywhere they want, and they just go a goal. 
<laughs> you should make me understand that. That they just pick up a ball, just play it around, pass it to your next player, just go and score. That is what they do. No style, no identity. They just play like that way. No, it doesn't happen. The fact that the style is not working to perfection does not mean it doesn't have a style. That is one thing we really need to understand. Every single manager in this world has a style. Every single manager in this world definitely have an identity that is actually exhibited within their teams. Not necessarily up to perfection, but sometimes you see glimpses of it. It happens everywhere. Even the weakest coaches that we've known. How come all of us understand and know that this is how Tony Pulis love to play? Long balls. We saw Stoke City. We saw West Brom at some point in time. This is how Tony Pulis wants to play. You may not like it, but it is his style. It is everything that he does. So when Sicho makes a statement like there is no style, I think um, he needs to go back and come again and um, come and tell us something better than there is no style. Can we I, talk can about I it. Okay, so so granted, I don't know. Granted, I don't know Eric Ten Hag's style, and you you are claiming now that he has a style. Can you then tell us my United style this season? The coach has always style? the coach the coach the coach has always been treated in his press conferences and most of the time that he would love to build from the back. He would love to see his teams involved in quick transitions and be quite clinical, either defensively or even in attack in terms of the transitions. This is something that he has always been saying. Start from the back, try and build something, not possession dominated, but be quick in transitions. When you are defending, to be quick in making sure that the transitions, you are back to defend as a whole, 11 defending, 11 attacking, try and get in your boats, and you are on. So I don't understand how you think these things are not because we see it with Jürgen Klopp. Jürgen Klopp seems normally deals with transitions. How they transit when they attack, how they, they, they transit when they are defended. This is what has been evident with the Jürgen Klopp's team. That is why we may call them, maybe they might, they might have to press, they just get the ball, press you one, two, three meters, they are in your post, they just go in their back, defending whenever you get a counter-attack against them. Me, my issue with Manchester United does not actually associate itself with style, but about personnel, which personally, you might be right with one or two th things when it comes to some signings that Rick Ten Hag did. But if all signings are going to be used against a manager to say that he doesn't deserve to stay in the team, or more or less, they're not getting the right profile to fit in into the system, which means we should sack him, I would never agree. He needs help. Ten Hag needs help. Not necessarily Ten Hag needs to be sacked. These are things I expect us to fully understand. And he has shown glimpses of what he wants his team to do in various games that we've seen the team play. We've seen it against Barcelona. We saw it last season. If you watch that against Real Betis, you saw that particular kind of game that Manchester United played. Against Manchester City at Old Trafford, we saw that particular kind of football that he wanted to play. Against Arsenal, even in the first leg. Let me even talk about this season, how Manchester United played against Arsenal before the game actually went two goals and three goals to one in favour of Arsenal. So these are evidence of what you expect to see from his teams. And the fact that Ayas were playing possessive football at some point in time, dominating games in those particular aspects, it doesn't mean the coach should necessarily stick to everything that is quite not existent in Manchester United to perform like how Ayas was doing on the field in terms of how they were, they, they were, they were possessing um, these games that they were playing. Sometimes I, be, I, be, I, I want, I want to, to I want to address a specific issue. I want to ask you a specific issue. Sicho makes mention of the fact that I, I wouldn't know whether it's a fact, but I want to get it from you. Of the notion that Ericsson Hag hasn't improved players at the club. What what do you what do you make of this this assertion? It's not a fact. It's not a fact at all. Improvement does not only come from the coach. Players also work hard to improve on their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. The reason why Citro is so much happy with Cristiano Ronaldo and can see a lot of things about Cristiano Ronaldo is because he worked hard to get to where he where he is now that he's playing with Anna Say and all of those things, Balondo and everything. He worked hard. He improved where he had weaknesses. So coaches have their part to do. Players also have their part to do. But he's very specific. This is simple. He's very specific with examples that when you go to club, A or club B, the coach has mm -hmm. a player A and player B, mm -hmm. coach mm -hmm. player A and player B to play this mm -hmm. particular way. But he can't see mm -hmm. the same with Manchester United. That's the point. He's what is happening? I've, Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag has improved Diego Dalot. 
you watch him and you definitely feel that he has improved him. Obi Menu. I can talk about Leandro Ganacho. Mm -hmm. Really improved in that particular team. I can talk about the form that Harry Maguire was in before he became what he is today now. Mm -hmm. Can we say it is Harry Maguire or it is the coach? You are saying we are so listening. definitely. So definitely, all of these things are evident in terms of these individual players mm -hmm. who are improving game by game. And some of them has also been halted. Their improvement has been halted by the level of injuries that they've had. Because they pick up, they go back to injury. They pick up, they have injuries. They pick up, they have injuries. If they are not even, even able to pick up, that means the players need to do something above themselves to also correct around them. Because we had Anthony with it this week. He said he has been training. He has been working hard on his right foot. He has been working hard to get perfect in some of his weaknesses. This is not the coach's matter. But I believe there are key, key players that tactically have improved their game since then had came in. One of them is Harry Maguire. One of them is Diego Dalon. One of them is Kobe Menu. One of them is Alejandro Ganacho. So you believe these players have improved and that's in hard. All right. Yes. And it's not yes. solely the responsibility of the coach, but the players as well yeah me i will even i will even add scott mctominay to the list because we've seen a different part of scott mctominay that we have not seen before during his days at manchester united and the only gun association now we've seen a different part of scott mctominay we've seen a different part of scott mctominay why is it not true can I interject? Yes, go on, Situ. Can I interject? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, 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 for the opportunity. Listen. There's Scott McTominay that Scottish know. Every Scottish who knows Scott McTominay can tell you that the McTominay my United is enjoying this season. He's been there from McTominay is scoring and arriving in the box late for Scotland before Eric Ten Hag. In fact, let me tell you. Ten Hag wasn't using McTominay this season. And anytime McTominay popped up for Scotland, he was arriving in the box and scoring these kind of goals. Then Ten Hag said, oh, Scotland is going to use this plan and I do. So let me copy that what Scotland have been doing and replicate it somewhere United. So, so, hey, so you do you think Ten Hag said, let me copy him on what you're doing? Yes, yes. Oh, why? Chico, you are not being fair. You are not being fair at all. Oh, oh, let, me, let me finish my introduction. If you allow me to interject, if you say no, okay. I won't interject. I'm saying okay, that the Scott McTominay we are seeing this season, he's been there from today. Ten Hag did show McTominay how to arrive in the box. And I'm saying that typical example is this season. When Ten Hag wanted to sell McTominay, and we went for the first international international games, when he was bagging a hat trick against Spain and what have you, and was the top goal scorer for Scotland in their Euro qualifiers, that's what he was doing. That wasn't Ten Hag. At that time, wasn't that really having him in his plans? But he was doing it. Let's talk about Harry Maguire. The Maguire you claim the hand has improved. We shot him at the World Cup. We shot him at the Euros. That's how Maguire was playing. He's in fact. Every time he's played for England, he's been England's best centre back. With Eric Ten Hag, Maguire lost confidence. Maguire lost form. And Maguire has rediscovered really the form that he had. Because we've seen him perform at the highest level already. We talk about Kobe Menu. Brother, Kobe Menu is the Kobe Menu we need from the academy. Right now, he's playing in senior Sit pro. Sitio, Kobe oh, Menu is the Kobe oh. Menu from the academy. Yes. Yes. Oh, Sitio, come on. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, I'm saying this is Kobe, never true. Menu, the Kobe Menu never is true. in my United youth team. Never and true. The ability of Kobe Menu is the same. What we it's expect is the house. The guy has really improved. It's not true. It's never true. In, 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 in what? In what has he improved in? That's all it's I want. It's never to true. Do. First of all, first of all, let me ask you this. Okay. Has Scott McTominay ever had the highest goal scoring season like he's having this season? Yeah, no manager has used him like that before. Only Ten Hag. That's why every time they make sure it's open. Nobody has used him like that except Ten Hag. No, no. Now he has the yes. numbers. No, in, in club football, in, 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 in countryside, it's normal to them. No Scottish. We, are, we are talking about Manchester United now. We are talking and about I Manchester United. In this country. In this country, oh, they used to be better than... Are we talking about Manchester okay. United or we are talking about Scotland? No, you're talking about, about Manchester the player. United. We're talking about the player. No. That, if you are okay. talking about the player, the perspective yes. in which we are talking about the player is all about Manchester United. Mm -hmm. No, it's not possible. That, there's Why no is it not possible? No! Okay. Are we discussing the Scotland national team there? No, Kwame, no, we are, just are, 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 are we discussing... 
I'll, I'll come here. Let you let Sicho make his point from there, then I'll get to you so that we hear what you are making. I'm, I'm, saying, that, your point. I'm saying that they will get to Sicho. The reason why, the reason why I am, I am, I'm using Scotland as reference to McTominay is that I want yeah, to put Scotland to has nothing here. No, Akumi, I'm saying that the reason why I'm using Scotland to discuss McTominay is that I want people to understand that the McTominay they are watching now, it is not what he's doing in my United, it's not a new ability discovered. Yes, so I'm saying that what he's doing at my United, there's nobody in Scotland who is surprised. There's nobody in Scotland who is going to say Eric Ten Hag has unlocked something in McTominay they didn't know. It is rather uh, uh, Eric Ten Hag who's going to watch McTominay in Scotland and say that there is this potential about him he didn't know. And at the time he started playing McTominay, nobody could score. Hoyland wasn't scoring. Masao was always injured. Anthony, he starts from Titi. Rashford has had a poor start to the season. And McTominay now was being used like Scotland would use him, breaking into the box late, arriving on the edge of the box, and started scoring like he was doing for his country. So I'm saying, if you play as an improvement at United, then I want to talk about Scotland. When he's, when he's done, I'll get to you. I'll get to you on that. I'm done, I'm done. You are done. Okay, oh, okay. Let, let me hear you. Let me hear your rebuttal on that okay. specific issue. Okay, Citro, Citro, I'll have to ask Citro some few questions. Now, we have Scott McTominay, uh, Scott McTominay being a top scorer for Manchester United this season. And definitely, this is his highest oh, scoring. This is his highest scoring season at Manchester United. Now, I ask Situ, having this season as his highest goal scoring season in the Manchester United GC, deciding tough games for Manchester United, scoring critical goals, do you call it an improvement or not? From the previous season, comparatively, it's not an improvement in stability. It's not. It's, it's, it's a, not an. Even not on the school for improvement by Ten Hag. It, it's oh, not an improvement by Ten Hag. I'm telling you. I mean, no, Sidro, I'm in a class, okay? I'm in a class yes. and I'm always I'm always fourth in position in the class. Now, yes, this time around, class. I, have, I have moved from fourth position to second position in the yes. class. You think it is not an improvement. Uh, let me let me let me let me reframe it. Let me reframe it. Let me reframe it. Let me, it's not an improvement. No, let, 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 guys, let, 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 let's 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 try and wrap up on the Scott McTominay issue on the improvement. When I'm done, when I'm let done, me then, then he's okay, talking good. about Scott McTominay, uh, Kobe Menu. Yes. I've watched Kobe Menu, the junior okay. science, mm -hmm. and I've watched a lot of things about Kobe Menu. Kobe Menu have literally improved so much in his level of intelligence and decision making at the top level when it comes to playing for the senior team. Mm -hmm. Kobe Menu used to keep long on the ball. If you really know him so well, at the junior side, he can keep the ball for, for, for longer minutes. And at some point in time, Nick Cox was even complaining that he's too much talented. So sometimes he should learn how to release. No when to pass. No when to occupy spaces. Mm -hmm. If Let's you go back and go and watch the FA Cup games which Kobe Menu played. Mm -hmm. And the things that he was doing. And compared to now, the level of experience and the level of maturity in this game now, when it comes to taking decisions, I will not even talk about Alejandro Ganacho. That guy was a kick and run. Too raw. Ganacho was too raw. Mm -hmm. But now you look at Ganacho taking on, making, taking some decisions, making some decisions, deciding, deciding some games for Manchester United. At some point, okay. where personally I feel doing his FA Cup games, even in the youth game, mm -hmm. you would have, you would have, would have even taken those decisions at that, at that particular time. Yeah. So, and so, so you feel, that you feel that Ten Hag has played a role in. In developing him to the level that we are seeing now, Pame, which role were no, you seeing? Should improve at twenty four. You should improve at twenty four. At Manchester United during his academy days. Come again, come again. There was a bit of. Which role? Alejandro Ganacho was literally a left winger. You know, a left winger, he's a left yes. winger. Yes, he was a left huh? winger. But right now, what is he doing at the right wing? He's playing. He's playing at the right wing. Yeah. And is he doing well or not? Oh, he's excelling. He's excelling. Obviously, he's excelling at the right wing. So it is by whose kind of authority and decision that has brought him that far that he could play I'm not, I am not part of the debate. I'm moderating the debate. You can you should be asking Sicho that question. I'm <laughs> asking my brother Sicho to answer this. Sicho, oh, that's a question, well, direct question well, to well, you. So he's playing on the right listen, wing according to Ak Akumia. Who's by well, uh, by, by by what means is, is it is it the improvement that we see on the right wing is it on the part of Garnacho's own abilities or the coach that is coaching him to be able to play that right wing? 
Yeah, again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it is if playing on the right wing is necessarily an improvement. We don't know Ganacho is talented, and he's gone down that wing and he's doing fairly well. Credit to Ganacho, maybe credit to the coach for giving him more minutes for more starts. But the ability he shows on the ball and his lack of decision making at times, and some of the processing and thinking, is still a player. Bless him, he's still very young. I'm not going to say the coach should, should he put Kevin De Bruyne in his head or open his head and put. Uh, uh, Ronaldo in his head. He's still going to develop. I'm just saying I'm not seeing that body of work for Ten Hag in developing players. Yeah. I think it's more down to Ganacho than Ten Hag, but only time will tell. And for me, even if he's improved them, th- these are insignificant metrics to it, to, 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 to what I, they are doing. It's the reason why collectively the team is not playing well. I mean, they are part of the team. Are you aware he has called, he has literally contributed more at the right wing than even the, 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 the left wing? Are you aware? Yes, yes. I, I, I am aware. I am uh-huh. yeah. So how do you call yes. those particular contributions later? So when let me so the answer, the answer is simple. United from that rule. So the answer is simple. When he's played on the when he's played on the right hand side, he has he has very few uh, uh very few opportunities at goal than when he plays on the left. Because on the left, when he's mm-hmm. shifted in, he's almost always shooting. And even this season, yeah, in the same team. When mm. they've taken him to the left side because of a change, then Rashford has gone down the middle. Yeah. He's uh, taking unnecess- more unnecessary shots mm-hmm. than when it's on the right. When it's on the right, he starts to cross more, he starts to pass more. Mm. But he doesn't obviously have a shot at goal. But yeah. when it's come to the left, he's making the same, the same childhood, childhood or childish decisions he was making from last season. But he has improved to know yeah. Hmm. Guys, you uh, let, uh, yeah, Akumi, I just come in briefly, then we'll go for a break. When we come back, we'll come and look at issues of recruitment. And then we will wrap it up on whether indeed Eric Ten Hag has done enough to warrant a stay at the club or not. Let me let me say anyone that has watched Manchester United from the past, eh? When the team even struggles to win at some Manchester United is not that particular kind of possessive nature team. We've watched it, probably you and me, we know Manchester United for yes. both times. Mm-hmm. We've even had worse games under Sales Ferguson more than what you've even watched under Eric Ten Hag at some point in time. Mm-hmm. But the whole line and concept around Salas Ferguson is he actually made one trophies what mm-hmm. and yeah. took risk. I hope you get me right. Yeah. Now, this is the coach of coming, trying to pick up his own style, trying to work and make sure that he links what he wants to do to what Manchester United has always been about. Okay. Not to change what Manchester United is. Our club is a traditional club. It mm-hmm. has its identity uh, DNA. Yeah. It's not easy to the course of such teams. For example, it's like telling me you are going to Real Madrid to go and change what Real Madrid does or the mentality, the DNA of what Real Madrid means. Mm-hmm. You can't. Mm-hmm. But Barcelona always stick to what they've always known since time immemorial. Mm-hmm. Why is it that time and like, whenever you change their style, they are angry with you? Look mm-hmm. at what they did to Pep Guardiola at some point in time. Some mm-hmm. were even saying yeah, they actually destroyed how they play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Things and their tradition and what they do. You cannot change. All you have to do is attach a little bit of something or modernize whatever they used to do to create something fresh out of nowhere and do whatever you're supposed to do. And I think that is what Eric Ten Hag is trying his best to do. But I have issues with personnel. I want to ask Situ, does he think that a change of manager will change the whole situation of Manchester United? When, when we come back from that break, we'll throw that question to Situ. We we'll look at issues of Ten Hag and recruitment, and then we'll wrap it up here on a showdown on United and everything physical. So we are going for a quick break, but we come back and continue. It's been very heated between the two gentlemen here on <laughs> on the showdown on United and everything football. We'll be right back after this. All right, so thank you and welcome back. It's been so heated here with my brothers, two brothers at each other's throats, or whether the coach should stay or the coach should live. See, Akobia asked the question. He has a very Akobia. What, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, I asked you that. Does he think that sacking Eric Ten Hag? Yes, yes, will yes, solve yes. every single problem at Manchester. Does, United? does Eric Ten Hag even solve every problem at Man United? Well, in everything I've said about Ten Hag, I've never really said they should sack him. But I think um, sacking him could be one of the ways to move the club forward. I think mm-hmm. because when you've got when you've got when you've got players to to yes, my United have got some great individuals. Yeah, and when you've got players for two seasons and they're not necessarily achieving 
success. Uh, you are not walking the talk. The Hulk said a lot of things, but the guy even got plenty of things. Yeah. Everyone will come to an end and says, I think you're going to be stepping. Yeah. When they that for two seasons, some of your best assets are likely going to lose faith in the coach mm-hmm. or you are forced to change that whole group for the manager. Yeah. What works for Ten Hag is United have been through this cycle over and over again where players have kept being kept and the managers have gone yeah. and that hasn't changed. So what works for him now is if the players can now be changed mm-hmm. and the manager stays longer, then you see if the manager is truly not good or was the players. I think that Eric Ten Hag is a good coach. Just not good enough for my United. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I believe it's... it's it, 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 it creates the, the, the mental that I want to have about... My first interjection. Okay. okay. Yeah, go on. <laughs> you see, Eric Ten Hag is a good coach, but not good enough for Manchester United. Who is good enough yeah. for Manchester We've seen Jose Mourinho. Now they know. They, now they know. No, we, yeah. we've seen Luke Van Gaal. We've seen Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Mourinho, Mourinho and Van Gaal were past their best. Mola. They were past their best. Mourinho, since my United, when you should view. No, I said... <laughs> when was past the best one, and that's the thing about United, though. You don't have a tenor. Now Mourinho has a fine big name. 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 Now Mourinho has a class is permanent. Set your book class, no? Yeah. As it stands now, you think Ronaldo is still class. That is the same way with Jose Mourinho. So if you think that, you say, okay, you can't say Eric Ten Hag sacked Cristiano Ronaldo because that's at that time, no, it's not a bad name. For our international audience, please, let's continue. They are doing sack. They are doing sack Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo sack decided he won't play. Ronaldo, Ronaldo sacked yeah. himself. Okay, we hear. So he decided that he won't play again. He decided he wouldn't play. He decided that who is Tehag? Between Tehag and Ronaldo, my United States fans will pick Ronaldo every day. So you go Tehag and last him and bench him. But my point is that I think that Ten Hag deserves the time to build his team. Okay. I'm just not convinced that he's good enough a coach to mm-hmm. even build a team. Mm-hmm. And go on and give United what it deserves. Yeah. Win the league, be competitive in Europe. Listen, Ten Hag has only had one com- one miracle season in Europe. Mm-hmm. What happened to my United this season in Europe wasn't a fluke. Mm-hmm. It was the manager's nature. Mm-hmm. After the Ajax miracle to get them to the semi final, mm-hmm. every other season in Europe was a disaster. Okay, he didn't do well in Europe. He doesn't do well in Europe. Okay, so he, that that also is a question for United fans to ask themselves: Do they really believe that Ten Hag? Even if he gets his own players, can beat City, beat a Liverpool team. I mean, Chelsea are very far away from getting the competitive, so there's no problem. Or perhaps now, an Arsenal team that is rising. Mm-hmm. Only time will tell. Akubia. Um, yeah, let's hear, let's hear um, a and then let's, I, let's, I, let's I, wrap I, it up quickly. Okay. As I'm wrapping up, I think everything that Situ has said, personally, if you think the Hag is not a man good, good enough to build Manchester United again, who else? Who are you going to bring in? Which coach are you going to appoint? Definitely, he has also shown in his first season that when the dead woods, that some other coaches actually left behind, he could actually maneuver his way, try and get some results by squeezing it out of them. Mm-hmm. This team has suffered injuries. Even our back four, the most consistent back four we saw last season, have only played four times this season. Only four. 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 Not to even talk about the midfield so, combinations so, we wanted to start. Kala, Kala and Chelsea that has got what? Citrus, Citrus International is over. Please, call me. It's true, it's true, it's true. Call me, please. Akubia, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, you look at what actually happened with the injury situations at Manchester United. Okay. How these players will adapt to the kind of situation. Now, he has gone back to the same team that caused so many managers downfall at Manchester United and he's even doing well trying to get something out of them. He has the highest win percentage at par with Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. The number of games he has won at Manchester United, so many managers have come in and they could not have done that. He, he has only 18 months left on his contract. Let him stay. Give him the trust. Support him just like Ayas did with the level of sporting structures that he surrounded him with. Get him the right choice of players, and he's going to do a better, better, better job for you. Me, I'm saying this again. If Ten Hag was not a Manchester United manager, by now, the club would be chasing after him to get him because by now, he would have even won the Dutch League for the fifth time or even sixth time. And we'll be in, rushing in for him and thinking that he'll come and solve the problem for us. So why not now? Why? Why Why not now? Since you were talking about Carlo Ancelotti having injuries, but still... Getting the best out of the Madrid team, right? Yeah, I mean, 
listen, but listen, it's Real Madrid. I don't think the level of competition in La Liga is even great this season. So that, that was just by the way. But it's true. He's still going strong in Champions League and he's still winning the league. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, even with the injuries, you see, when you have great managers, even with injuries, you identify and you know how they want to play. Yeah. With or without injuries, Eric Ten Hag's Man United lacks any form of consistency in style, in approach. In a, listen, if I tell you how United are going to approach their next game, you can describe it. Yeah. You'd have to watch it to know. If yeah. I ask you how Roma are going to play, how City are going to play, how Liverpool are going to play, Arsenal are going to play, you're able to, even how Chelsea are going to play, because Chelsea are very poor, you can tell me how poor they can look. Yeah. Even how they are going to play, you, you, you have a mental picture of how they are going to look. That's true. But when you talk about Man United, you are more negative about the team than positive. We are actually now, when Man United next opponent come up against United, you are thinking they are going to walk down the middle. Onana is going to face lots of shots. Their fullbacks are going to be easily winning balls of Rashford. When you think United, you think more negative. You think more positive for the opponent and more negative for Man United simply because even in games that they've won, they are sweating. It's not being comfortable. It's not being smooth. And for a manager in his second season, it, it's unpardonable that you not be able to get a tight group or a tight a, a team that can play tight together and, and compact. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. All right, so let's wrap it up. Um, let me start with you, Akumi. Your last words before we leave uh, from this Fami. very very interesting debate. Yeah, Fami, Fami. No single manager will survive with the level of injuries to his key players. No, you you let uh, uh, Manchester City lose out on Rodri for like three games and let's see something. I want us to see something. And you let Arsenal lose out on Saliba or even Declan Rice and let us see something. Last season, getting to the latter part of the season, you saw how they missed Saliba in that particular team. Not to even talk about the first win of Ateta. It was poor. And nobody can convince me in this world that Arsenal was consistent with the staff. No one. Mm. I'm saying it here again. No one. No one can convince me. Arsenal were even dominated by clubs who were even fighting for relegation. Mm-hmm. Arsenal were dominated by clubs who were fighting rele- for relegation in the Atleta's second season. Pep Guardiola came to meet a Manchester City side that the foundation had already been laid properly with structures. And even coaches who had come in to do a job. Manuel Pellegrini had already played the semi-final of the Champions League with Manchester City. He was winning the league. And the small foundation and the standard was there. Mm-hmm. You talk about Real Madrid. When Real Madrid lost Jude Bellingham for some time, they lost um, their centre backs for some time. When they're drawing against Mallorca and Valladolid and Co. Mm-hmm. So there are games these teams will not play at their best, but they'll find a way to win. It's, it's stages of rebuilding. Where Manchester United have got into, we can't afford to start a new project. Mm-hmm. No. It's two things. Use Eric Ten Hag to lay the foundation like Roman Abramovich use Claudio Ranieri to lay the foundation for Jose Mourinho. Mm-hmm. So use Eric Ten Hag to lay the foundation, mm-hmm. then build upon it. You can't afford to start the whole foundation again and build another thing on Manchester United. No. Okay. That's an interesting one from Akumia. Siju, let, let's, let's wrap it up. Your, your final thoughts. All right, in wrapping up, up this debate. Yeah, in wrapping up, uh, listen, for, for example, like Akumia said, for example, like, let me put, let me make this as clear as possible for the for my final points. Mm-hmm. When I talk about the manager's lack of identity and style, it's regardless of, regardless of personnel. Mm-hmm. If Arsenal loses William Saliba, mm-hmm. they might as well go on and lose games, but their style of playing, their principle won't change. City lost Kevin De Bruyne throughout the start of the season, and they still played like City. Mm-hmm. We saw t- Liverpool go into a tough final against Chelsea, play with babies. Top players were injured, but the team still looked like Liverpool. And that was irrespective of the injuries they had, right? So when I say United have not got a style, it has nothing to do with the injuries, with or without the players who are available. We can talk about the results. We can talk about how good those replacements can be. But the principles of the team remains the same. It's the same for every great coach. So the excuse for Tenang that his players are injured doesn't work for me because with or without them, the team's problems are still glaring, maybe then reduced. With or without them, the team is still not as good as many want it to be in the final third. My final point is this. Every Tenang for me isn't good enough for United level. 
His man management is questionable. His ideas about players and signings that he's made are questionable. And he's been outcoached, way, way outcoached by too many average Premier League managers and too many average coaches in Europe. And that for me in a second season for a manager at a club like my United isn't good enough. So yes, Ateta struggled in his first season because he came mid-season, that wasn't his team. Mm -hmm. But in the second season into his third season, which is now his second season, which was his first full season, yeah. and into his third season, which was his second full season, which mm -hmm. is Eric Hag's second full season, yeah. we saw the signs of what Miguel Ateta wanted to do. Mm -hmm. The midway through the season that he came, it's a different matter. His first full season was the second season. His second full season was his third season. And That's we could good. see what he wanted to do. Yeah. We can't see what Eric Tengar wants to do. And that for me is a worry. That for me is a concern. That is not good enough for my United manager. And that is why I think Eric Tengar ta, ta, is not good enough. <laughs> a lot of ta, ta, ta from Situ. If you don't know Situ, ta is a signature move, right? <laughs> Guys, it's been great having you on this debate. And I know a lot of people watching will enjoy this debate. Um, to direct and hard states. There are a lot of arguments for, arguments against, style of play, injuries, um, structure, talent, ID, a lot of different um, um, arguments. By the way, by the way, Ronaldo is not the reason why United are losing games. So <laughs> Please take your Ronaldo away. Ronaldo has left Manchester United. See, for those who are watching, and please, you are, you are not allowed to come into this. The, 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 the uh, how the foundation for these debates on Twitter has always been about Ronaldo. Just so you know. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. We are back tomorrow with United Today and in the course of the week with um, United and Everything Football Podcast, we'll be looking ahead of the game against Brentford and all the other things. So stick and stay with this channel. We have a lot for you on United content. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Sichu. Thanks, Michael. It's been great having you guys. Uh, we'll do this again on the showdown. Remember, the showdown has come to stay. It's our debate show here on United and everything. We will see you on the next one. Have a great time and enjoy yourself.